Welcome back everybody to my very messy workbench. Uh, this is the topic of today's video. Um, I'm setting up my workbench to be able to be live streamed, recorded, etc. Um, which is a little bit exciting for me because it means that I finally have some content that I can throw up onto the YouTube channel, my Facebooks and everything else. Um, long story short, I've cobbled together four different laptops <laughs> to make one super wall mounted laptop. Um, it does work even though it is literally bolted to the wall. Um, it's actually quite a good laptop. It's, uh, like I said, a collection of laptops that have been donated to the store. Um, basically, the story with some of these is, you know, the parts are too expensive or it's going to be, uh, you know, not worthwhile because the computer's too old or um, in one, if in the monitor's case, there was too much fire. Um, that one was a laptop that as soon as we opened it up, it literally caught fire at the hinge because the monitor lead was shorting out and the 12 volt just set fire to all of the surrounding plastic. Um, that one was fun. Um, by fun, I mean not fun. But anyway, uh, it's not a bad PC. It's an i5 8th gen, um, four core, eight threads, so more than enough to be transcoding what I'm doing. Um, plugged into that so far, I've got the uh, C922 Pro HD Stream Logitech. Um, basically, that's the, I don't know, gold standard for live streaming before you get into DSLRs and things like that. Um, you'll, you've probably already seen that camera a uh, hundred you know, times before in other uh, vlogs and things like that. Um, the other camera that we've got is my digital microscope. Um, at the moment, I'm connected up via webcam, um, or it works as a webcam, I should say. So when I open up OBS, when I open up OBS, there we go. You'll see that we have a, um, a nice little preview happening there. Um, none of this is quite set up how I want it yet. This is all just very proof of concept. And there's a whole bunch of super fun things that I'm going to put together uh, for you today. And you're going to be able to watch me build those. Um, so the first thing we're going to build is... I'm thinking some sort of LED hood or ring or something similar to go over the camera. Um, because originally I had these really large and cumbersome um, desk mounted lamps and you know they get they definitely give out enough light but it's just more things hanging off the desk that I'm not really keen on um, whereas some LED strip is probably going to be all that I really need to get rid of that harsh shadow um, the other thing that we're going to do which will probably be in a few more days because I'm waiting on things from eBay is we're going to change this microscope uh, from set up via USB as a webcam um, we're going to change that over to a uh, it has HDMI pass through on the back of it just there um, so we're going to go HDMI uh, to a HDMI to USB capture device into the side of this um, also condenser mic that's going on the desk as well um, at this stage I may end up just using a lavalier mic or something similar because um, I am running out of USB ports and I'm unsure how things will run on a hub. Um, if I had thought ahead of, of things I would have turned the built-in webcam on this computer um, into another USB port because that's all that webcams that are built in are is just a USB camera. Um, but I didn't think ahead and then I glued it and screwed it to the wall. So what you see is what you get. <laughs> um, anyway, let's cut over to the desk. Um, we're not really going to see anything on the microscope today, but we'll be able to see what the uh, bird's eye view overhead camera looks like. Um, unfortunately, the sound is going to be garbage until I set up the microphone, but that's what this uh, video vlog is all about, is showing you how things improve. Um, as time goes on and then finally we'll have like a bit of a uh, what's the word for it I don't know a blank no not blank oh my god it's too early and I've only had half a coffee um, 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 format format is what I was looking for so yeah we'll have a standard format that you'll see in every video and that'll just be top down 
um, cutting back and forth between the microscope uh, to get you really, really close up macro shots. Um, but for now, I think that we might get started on our lighting because I think that that is going to be one of the, the biggest improvements possible. All right, have fun. Okay, so to begin with, um, let's go over with what we've got to work with. So I've got some, this is actually the cover plate of some trunking. Um, trunking is, you've probably seen it already, it's a thing that you use to cover up uh, cabling on a wall. So this would like, would be like a C channel that sort of goes on like this. Cable sitting here and then that covers over the front of it. Um, it's really, really light. It's really easy to cut. It's really easy to drill. Um, and I've cut it to about the same width as the mat. So hopefully the light will be kept sort of like here. Um, and I'm also hoping, and it's probably not gonna work, but I can hope, can't I? That you see how there's like a little ridge just along here? I'm hoping that that's going to uh, stop the LED strips from blinding me in the face, like my current light is, which is this magnification lamp um, which I mean it does an okay job it's kind of garbage and it uh, is blinding me the entire time that I'm on camera so anyway um, we've got some trunking we've got some recycled repurposed 50 50 um, cool white or 50 something I don't know it's the most powerful LED strip that's pure white that you can get um, I actually had about I don't know, 30, 40 meters of this stuff lighting up the roof of my old garage. Um, and then when I moved out of that house, it all got torn down off the, the rafters, which is why it's covered in like gross timber. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to focus. Anyway, um, so yeah, we're going to reuse some of that. Um, got a whole bunch of hot glue, got some Velcro straps because I wouldn't mind being able to take it off this camera because uh, as time goes on, I will get some decent lighting, at least that's what I'm promising myself. Um, so I guess the first thing we're going to do is find the center point of this that I've cut, which doesn't surprise me is going to be around 300. Um, so it is 600 and we'll call that 4, wait 604? No, that is 560, 562, oh my god, it is early. Um, I need a tech star. There we go, we'll get the good old Sharpie out. So, we'll clip that down there like that. Are you going to sit there? No, you're not. Stay. Stop. Stop it. Anyway. Um, so half of 560 is going to be, oh my god, math this early in the morning, so half of 500 is 250, add 30 to that, we've got 50, 60, 70, 80, um, and I think it was 2, so what's that, 281, so let's go uh, as good as we can go, 281, so there's our center point. Um, need a speed square. Can't find a speed square, set square or slidey square will have to do. We'll do the same job. So that there is roughly our center point. Doesn't really matter. Um, this is more for my OCD. Um, and now we're going to see how wide our camera mount is, which, sorry for the shakes, I'm measuring the camera as we speak, is 44. So we want 22 on either side. Um, does this do centimeters? It does do centimeters. Awesome. That's going to be heaps easier. So let's just call it 25 because we're going to make room for some cabling. Oh, that didn't even mark it. 25. And uh, I'll measure that off there. And there. It's 
What does that leave us with? I could do the math or I could just measure it. Um, so we want each strip to be about 250 long. Now, one of the things you've got to work with or work around with LED strip, besides incredibly old masking tape, is <coughs> LED strip is uh, it's divided up into modules of three. So we're going to measure the one module and see how many we can fit into 250. Um, and as we're going to wire these up in parallel from a common power rail, um, we can actually clip off the last uh, end of it slightly early before the, the three. So hopefully that'll work out okay with our 250 that we're aiming for. Um, so, oh, this is gross. Okay, so let's go. Let's set our tape out to 250. Oh man. So it looks like we have. One, what's that? One, two, three, four, five. Um, so we can do strips of five modules and we should be okay. Um, keeping in mind that this stuff is joined everywhere. Um, so some of this isn't going to quite work out how we want it. But there's one. We'll count along again. We'll go one, two, three, four, five. There's another one. We might actually just pause there and see how these are lining up. So there's one. There's two. Oh, we're either going to get three or four in here. Hopefully four, but I think three might have to do us. Yeah, let's do three. So we need six of these strips. So that was two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and that one's another solder join, which I mean in one way is okay because that means we don't have to tin it. One, two, three, four. Oh, I don't like that one. Uh, no, that's cracked. All right, well, we'll cut off there because that's too gross to use. And we'll, we won't bin that one, but it can go into the parts bin. So we'll start again. One, two, three, four. Is it another crack? No, it's not. It's just wood. And five. Are we going to get one more out of this? One, two, three, four, five. There's that one there. So how many was that? One, two, three, four, five. Ah, oh, we need one more. Let's see if we can do it. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Hopefully, hopefully that's going to work for us. Did that all right. Okay, um, so the rest of our LED strip can go back into the parts bin. We don't need that. And here's my son. One second. Okay, we're back. Um, Very plotting. Yes, it is. All right, so we've got all of our LED strip cut, and we'll line all of these up so all the positive terminals are facing the same way. So there's that one, and one more like that. Okay, so it'll be three in a line, somewhat like that. Right, now the sticky side of this, normally there's like a peel back double-sided tape thing. 
Um, all of that is gone on this stuff, so we're going to do the next best thing and just glue the living crap out of it with some hot glue. So let's get some hot snot happening. I think what we might do is work from this end. Just put down enough to tack it in place. Mostly because I don't want to be sitting here forever waiting for it to. Um, actually, we'll start from the middle. Waiting for it to go off. I was about to say dry, but it doesn't really dry. It just sort of, I don't know, congeals. All right, there's one. There is two. three. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, no one's really going to see it and other than the wiring, um, none of it really has to be too perfect. Even the wiring, there's like a little bit of play on that. It's just that, um, you know, obviously we're going to do it safely, like we're going to insulate whatever we can and cable manage whatever we can. Um, but overall, no, at the end of the day, this doesn't really matter too much. It's only low voltage and low amperage, so it's not like it's... Well, I mean, it could catch fire. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, so we'll just work our way down with little bits of hot glue here and there. And again, we're not going to use too much because if we do that, it's going to take forever to set. That's probably the word I was looking for. Ow. And it's very hot. Anyone would think that they call it hot glue for a reason. And that's stuck there as well. I'll come down a little bit further. We'll just work our way down. Probably should have tested this before I actually glued it all in place. Yeah, LED strip is pretty, pretty bulletproof. It's actually surprised me quite a few times. Like we use it um, when we go camping a lot, and I remember one camp we had a roll of just the cheapest, like non-insulated interior only, like. $3 a meter LED strip, this colored LED, um, sitting in pretty much a bucket of water for about three days while we were camping. And it survived. It was still working. It was lighting up the water, if anything. All right, there's one side done. As I said, that is good enough. So we're gonna move across to our other side. And just quickly make sure that everybody is going to line up nice and happy. See, so it's actually marked. Uh, let's see if I can pull this up to the camera. I'm unsure if I've set autofocus because I'm a professional. Uh, looks like it's in focus. So here's the copper pads that we're going to solder to at the ends, up this end. Um, You'll notice that one side is 12 volt and the other side is negative. Now what we could do is do these in series where series is basically I have the power coming in here and then it runs up here to the end and we loop back around and then it comes back here and we loop back around and it comes up here. The problem with that is that, well, it's a pain in the dick. Um, so we're just going to go 12 volt, 12 volt, 12 volt, negative, 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 or ground, ground, ground. Um, and then have probably here, or like over here or something, some cable entry. Um, and that's gonna be good enough. Okay, so let's get this side lined up again. Um, okay, so all of our, ah, just going everywhere. All right, screw up. We'll do it live. 
Um, so again, let's have a dab of hot glue there. Not too much. And we'll just try and aim for the center with our first one. That should do. You do have to work kind of quick with hot glue. Um, I have a pretty powerful hot glue gun. It's one of the larger 11 or 12 millimeter glue stick hot glue guns. Um, so it does stay hot a little bit longer. The downside is that it starts hotter. So if you're ever working with stuff like foam, um, you've got to be very careful. And I generally like plug it in for a bit, let the glue melt, let the tip get hot and then unplug it again. And in that way, you're sort of working in like this, this plastic window where it's still liquid, but it's not at full temperature. Um, but anyway, I digress. I'm just gonna flip this around because it's a bit easier, me being right-handed to do it this way. So that is set enough. We'll come down here a little bit more. And again, we'll just try and keep that center line, try and keep them together. And this is for no other reason other than I am incredibly OCD. Just enough to hold it. I'll pop a bit more over there. And center down first. Burn your finger. Press that in. Burn your finger a second time. And that's all holding it, holding down properly. And then we'll do our end. Where's that going? Probably about here. Now one of the things you want to watch out for when you're using hot glue and electronics is try and keep it away from anywhere that you're going to need to solder to. Because trust me, if you get hot glue on your soldering iron tip, um, like once or twice probably isn't going to be the end of the world, but it is definitely going to shorten the life of the soldering tip. Um, what you will find, however, is that it'll just be almost impossible to solder to. Oh, hi. So there, we're done there. Um, I think I might just turn off the hot glue gun and we'll get on to soldering. That's off. Okay. Soldering iron. And some solder. So we're using our standard, what are we using, 60-40? Yeah, 60-40. Mm -hmm. um, we're using a 0.7 millimeter because it is what I have on hand. And our soldering tip is an absolute cancer of a conical tip. And so what we're doing is we're just adding some solder to each of the contacts that don't have it and I'm just going to add a little bit more to the ones that are already soldered simply to reflow that solder because we don't know how old it is. I mean it was in my shed probably about three years ago for a good year and who knows how long it was sitting on the shelf before that. But you do have to be pretty quick with LED strip. Doesn't like a tremendous amount of heat. Yeah, that looks awful. Um, and now, we'll get some wiring happening. Maybe even drill some holes. That would probably be a better idea. Probably would have been an even better idea if I did that first. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. Um, 
So we're going to drill in basically wherever we can. Being very careful not to, not to drill ourselves. And by very careful, I mean not careful at all. Just spin that around so I don't drill myself. Okay. So that's going to give us our mounting holes because we're going to use cable ties. I was going to use Velcro, but um, now I'm not. Cool. I'll get some of that off the bench. Um, and we need a cable entry point. How about, how about we don't? How's that going to sit? think because our cable ties are going to go across the back here like this so we want let's do something down the center here how about that so how about no, it's going to get rid of all the structural integrity ah, but on the other hand how about I do anyway One, and two layers. Cool. Okay, so what type of cable are we going to use for that? Got some light hookup wire, and hopefully, we can get two of these cores through here. Ah, oh, like I bought one. There we go. Now, we don't need much of a tail on this because I've got a plug that I'm going to throw on the end of that, or maybe I won't. I don't know. We'll work it out. I think what we might do actually. The hot glue gun hasn't already pulled down, which it has. All right. Now, not enough to stop me from burning myself. Let me get one more out of that. Oh, there we go. Everywhere, all over the place. All right. And now we wait. So I think what we might do here is sort of right angle here and then just daisy chain everything. Um, we could, we could, we could, we could even use Nope, we're not going to do that. Sorry, talking to myself. You ever do that when you're sort of working on something like this? I think a good 90% of it, besides burning yourself on hot glue for no reason, is um, just looking at a thing and then you do a little bit of it and then you sort of sit back and you see what you've done and you do a little bit more. I don't know if you all work like that or if it's, I don't know. Just me and my autism. All right, cool. So we're gonna start there. The problem with if we do it that way is we're gonna have a lot of mess with all of this. Uh, do I really wanna do a squid? So a squid would be, we use like a, a central line in and then I just put an obscene amount of wires off of that and that sounds really messy. I think what we might have to do 
Let's do a common earth where we're just going to sort of. No, screw it. Let's do it like this. All right, cool. So, one of the things you can do with these wire strippers is you can strip back just a little bit of the insulation, like so. And then we can give it a bit of a twist. And that's going to give us just enough to get our solder onto. And then we can move on to the next one and keep going on like that. So, and then we might need to tin that. Uh, there's my solder and my soldering iron. Um, and we might even do that this way while working on this side. We'll get it somewhat where we need it to go. That's our first positive, or 12 volt, or whatever you want to call it. I think we might just focus on that. I'm just doing one earth at a, uh, one power rail at a time. took a bit too much off that, but that's fine. And we'll tin our wire again, because it's going to make it easier. We have a filthy big blob of solder on there. And now we'll burn our fingers, as is the way. This is the way. Oh my god. It comes out in less than what is it? Two weeks. The new episode, the new episodes of Mandalorian. That will be cool. There we go. I'll fold that over. Give it a quick twist. What a twist! Again, to the wire. I hope you guys find this interesting. It's me talking to myself for an hour and a half straight. Ow. Okay. Now that we've got that done, we'll move on to our negative wire. So we want it to sort of lay like this. Even with things that are as simple as this, one of the things you do really want to keep in mind is where your cables are running. Um, I find that not only is it going to help you out actually putting it together and keeping it nice and tidy, but if anything ever breaks, it's going to make it a lot easier to get in there. I think it was Ben Hex said, um, build things that you can pull apart. And if you can, build them like a book. So opening up with all the wires on one side. So this is kind of like a permanently open book. Okay. Should really have my extractor fan on. 
I think the problem with that is until I get my condenser mic set up, not only do you guys have to put up with horrible audio, um, but I also can't really filter out too much of the background noise that's in this building. Like we're on the highway in Belmont, for example. So you're probably hearing a lot of um, traffic noise at the moment. The last thing I want to be yelling out, ah, damn you. Okay. So that isn't the end of the world. We can fix this, we can make it better, we can make it stronger. Um, but it is a bit of a pain. What's just happened is I've very cleverly torn the pads straight off of our, um, our LED strip here. Is there copper under there? Yes, there is. So we're just going to cut back some of this solder mask. And hopefully... Hopefully, we can still get a half decent connection on that. And we could just solder to this side of the first LED. But I don't want to. Because that sounds like even more effort. He says while struggling with solder mask. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. All right, cool. So instead of doing that, we're going to try and get a blob onto the side of our first chip. And hopefully we don't kill our first chip, because I really don't like a great deal of heat. Nope, it doesn't want to do that either. You know what we might do? Let's undo this. Completely. And then give up. Cool. So I'm just going to get another piece of that. Actually, we can just turn that around. Yeah, we can make that work. All right. So while our glue gun is heating back up to glue our strip back down in the opposite direction. Wait, does it work? In, does it work in both directions? Oh, oh no. Ah, oh, this is something we should definitely investigate. Um, okay, so I'll just hook up my power supply, because I don't actually know So we've got a power supply connected to, or set to 12 volts. Uh, nothing's going to short out if I do this, hopefully. Oh, Jesus. Yep, no, that works. Okay, so it works one way. Does it work the other way? Ooh, yep, okay. Oh god, your eyes as stunned as mine. Alright. Okay, so we can just flip that around. That is good. That is very good. Alright. Actually, let's just heat up what was already there. Oh. 
as I said before, burning yourself is a very important part of the process. As he's dropping things all over the damp floor. business. Now we just got to keep in mind to flip these now because we've changed the direction of how our uh, common power rail is going. Turn this last end. And we'll also be very careful not to tear the damn pad off again. There's that one done. to very quickly test that and see how it's doing. So we'll get our benchtop power supply back into action again. And get ready to blind ourselves. to stop me from doing that a second time is drop everything on the floor again and then encase all of this in a whole bunch of hot snot and we know that we're okay to do it like this at this stage because yeah, um, where my fingers are just here we now know that we've got uh, some like extra looped wires just in case we ever need to you know solder back into that like say for example I don't know we break one of these leads um, we can also replace the LED strip as needed by cutting up here and yeah, just heating it up slightly, we'll be able to peel it back out if any of it ever dies. Which, to be brutally honest, by the time that happens, hopefully I'll have it together enough to be able to get some decent dimmable lighting. That's one of the other things with this is I don't know how it's going to go with dimming. Um, at the moment, my plan is I'm just going to run it off of my benchtop power supply. Uh, because I can actually vary the voltage. So that will in turn vary the brightness of the LEDs. Uh, just one second. Sorry about that, as I was saying. Um, it's actually school holidays at the moment, so I have my seven-year-old son. Um, he was gonna pop in from time to time. Okay, so let's give this a little bit more length. Um, but yeah, what I was saying before was, at the moment my plan is I'm gonna run this off my lab power supply, um, which has variable voltage. So by varying the voltage, ah, uh, damn it. Why? Why are you like this? So basically I've just pulled back way too much of that. Um, that's fine. This is fine. What we can do is come in here like this. 
and then uh, where's the soldering iron? There it is. Well, that's something you don't want to lose. 350 degree soldering iron. Yep. So we'll just tin that off where I've just twisted it and cut that back. There we go. Fixed for now. The problem with that is that now we're going to run out of wire in here. Um, that's okay. We'll just loop the last one or something. We're going to turn that around. Um, yeah, again, what I was trying to say. The lab power supply can vary its voltage, which will vary its brightness. Um, however, I do want to get a LED dimmer so that I can just have this plugged into a little 12 volt, like 2 amp, 1 amp even, uh, like wall wart, you know, power supply, power pack, whatever you want to call them. Um, but I'm pretty sure that all of the LED dimmers that are out there on the market at the moment, at least in my price range, without building something from scratch. Oh my God, strip. There we go. Um, all of them use something called pulse width modulation, which basically instead of varying the voltage down, from say 12 volt to you know 11, 10, etc. It sits between 12 volt and zero, and it turns off and on at a really, really fast rate. And I'm pretty sure that one of the issues that I'll have with that if I try and use that technology, the uh, PWM, is you'll be able to see the flickering of the LEDs in the in the camera. Um, so we'll we'll try it. We'll see. We might order one because they're only, you know, three, four dollars out of China. Um, and in about six months when it shows up, we'll know. Alright. Oh, that's filthy. Always keep a clean soldering iron. Nobody likes a dirty tip. There we go. Oh, that was really dumb. Should have just kept going with the positive side. Um, oh, that's ugly. Let us carefully reroute this. I'm going to try and keep these loops as small as possible on this side actually. Because otherwise we're going to run out before the end. the end of it. You can actually see just there that's where that wire ends. Alright, so what we might do is clip that off as close as we can. Just a little patch lead. If you don't have one of these, get one, they're amazing. I spent the um, the first probably 10 years or so just stripping wires with these and there is nothing like a really good set of wire strippers. Um, how are we going to do this four-handed bullcrap? So, 
we go. Tin one, tin one end, and tin the other. Clean our tip off. And we're gonna go from here around to here. That's not pretty, but it will work. Okay. So I'm going to try and make a commitment to leave in all of my mistakes wherever possible. Um, instead of editing everything out and making it all nice and pretty, and making me look like you know you never make a mistake in a world in the world, and that way I can make the mistakes for you, so you don't have to. Okay. Now this being the end of our run. about there. You don't have to worry about looping it around again. Oh, that's filthy. That is filthy. Alright. Just massage the last one into position. There we go. Oop. I'll give it one last test before I encase this side in the hot snot as well. Alright, you guys ready? Hey! Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Just break something? It felt like it broke something. No, we're all good. Just really gross soldering. Alright. It's a bit hard to do LED strip neatly when you're trying to pack stuff in together this tightly. But to be honest, it doesn't matter. And I don't really care. Let's just really get hammer that hot snot home. Um, and I might do the same across our center here. And we'll just wait for everything to cool down. At least cool down enough that I can let go of it. Um, so after this we're going to throw a decent sized lead on the end of this um, and then that will eventually run back to the power supply and we'll see how much of a difference it makes to our lights or well, to our video I should say. Yeah, the lights are going to be good. So whether or not it is the right type of light that we need for this film we will find out. To be honest, it'll be kind of cool just to have a decent light to work by. One that doesn't blind me in the face. Alright, I'm going to find some cable ties while that stuff cools down. Oh look, here's some I prepared earlier. Probably a bit short. And definitely a bit short. Are there any longer ones? Yeah, let's see if I have some longer ones. Alright. Ah, oh, no, what have I done? Glued my cable ties in. Yeah. Now I have glued myself to myself. Awesome. <laughs> Oh man, 
so many people would hate me for doing this, but I don't know. I find tacking it off sort of makes it set quicker. It's almost like your finger acts as a heat sink. All right, so that's pretty much set. drill that now that I've soldered and glued everything down. Um, let's just join a bunch of little ones together then, shall we? Oh, actually, hold on. Oh. The other ones I found were the same length and just a thinner diameter. Which is also what we don't want. I think what we might be able to do. Yeah, let's do that. So what we'll do is come around here. Yeah, that'll work really well. Um, I might actually put that on the other side though. We'll come down into here. So, and then we'll put two of these bad boys in there. Yee. All right, cool. And then hopefully that, yeah, that should be enough to loop over. Well, you know what? We're going to find out. Uh, let's alternate these. Why not? Just for shits and gigs. I'll pop another one over here. Do the thing. those cable ties that I thought were actually going to be too short ended up being just the right size. Complete angle so we get a nice little pointy thing to cut ourselves on later. Cool. Now we have this awesome attachment method. That's kind of cool. So that'll, the camera will sit in there like that. And that'll sit above us just up near the camera. All right. Let's move on. Uh, for this part, we shall need some heat shrink and some two core cable. So, it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. Let's use some of this stuff that I have on hand, which is laughably oversized actually a real pain in the butt to try and split this is one of those oh yeah i need a, a roll of figure eight cable and then i bought it and i used like a meter of it and on that job because we ended up using something else and now i've had this same roll of cable for the last five years 
I just try and use it wherever I can. twist. What a twist. And we'll find some heat shrink. I've got some five mil for everything. And I've got some, I think this is four mil. Hopefully the four mil fits over this, which it does just. So, I'll start off with a couple of pieces of this, like so, and we'll get yeah, a half decent piece of this, so about there, just to bring it all back together. We can unplug a hot glue gun as well. So we don't burn the shop down. Alrighty. Um, let's keep the black stripe. Oh, wait. Heat shrink first. problem with this wire is it is incredibly hard to keep steady and work with when you're working on thinner wire. So I think what we might do is we'll actually get off way more than what we need. We'll strip back more, way more than what we need. And we'll do it like this. The reason why I do it like this is it gives us a few more uh, revolutions. Is that the word I'm looking for? Twists, spines, I don't know. But yeah, it just gives us something to hold on to, basically, like for the wire to hold on to and hold it steady. Because I only have two hands. back a little bit more. Might just move all of this forward a bit. Ah, so much crap on my desk. start halfway with this one. There are better ways to join wires, but this is, I don't know. I sort of do everything different every time, but this is, I don't know, just for this situation, probably gonna be the easiest. See, I've still got this, um, this blue figure eight wire this stuff is still connected to the roll and because of its gauge, like it's quite thick, um, that means that, hang on, there we go, yeah because of the gauge being quite thick, uh, that actually means that it's like very stiff to work with and it doesn't want to bend around when you need it to, it's quite heavy. Move our heat shrink up over our joins. You see that? Yeah, good enough. Sort of work from the edge of the desk, desk naturally, so I'm gonna have to try and break that habit and bring it back into 
focus for you guys. Uh, we use our SMD rework tool, which is set to far too hot because I just burnt the shit out of my finger. Shrink our heat shrink down. And you don't need one of these, you can just use a lighter, like a, a barbecue candle lighter or something like that. It works pretty well. I simply use this because I have it there. It is nicer, like it does leave a better result. So you'll hear that in the background for a little bit while it cools down. Now I do have some heat shrink that's going to go over all of this. I even need to get the next size up, that's five, I might go up to six or seven. Um, but I'm going to slip that on the end before I connect it to the power supply. So now I just got to work out how much of this cable we need to leave. We need a little bit of a loop. I think about there's good. It gives us probably about two or three meters. Twist. What a twist. And I think that we definitely will get the larger size yeah, heat shrink. bit of it actually. We'll try and get probably about there. That should be enough. Alright, now let's do the really dumb thing and try and feed this all the way down the cable. Which is sure to be a pain in the butt. Cooperate. It does. Awesome. So I'm just pulling the cable through. strength. Now this stuff won't shrink down to perfectly encase those thinner wires, but it will give it just a little bit of double insulation so that if say for example something starts rubbing on it somehow it's not going to cut through that. And this is complete overkill. Like again, we're not working with crazy high voltages. Um, it's basically going to be fixed in place and just live there forever. There's a decent overhead light. The next time it'll be moved is when it's getting replaced. So I'm not overly worried, but at the same time, I just sort of can't leave it. I'm not done, at least halfway decent. angle for you but it works for me and I'm organized all right 
to that is our light. Now I'm going to subject you to some very, very wobbly vision and awful noises for just a moment while I connect this up. Yeah, how does that sound? <laughs> Apparently there's some people out there that Velcro is like nails on a chalkboard to them. So if you're watching, you're welcome. cable to the camera mount. You know what? Let's do the camera too. So, we'll strip off the end of our, our uh, light power lead. I'm only going to strip off a little bit because I'm going to be connecting it to some alligator clips for now, just for a test. Protected that way. And our positive. 12 volts. Come on, you bugger. You know what? Good enough. That'll work. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the main lamp I've been using. Thank God. Uh, this is definitely going to hit me in the eyes still, but anyway, we'll see how it goes. Oh, there we go. What the hell is that? You'll notice that our shadows have been cut down quite a fair bit. They are slightly, slightly out, but we'll see how that goes. So that's on and that's off and that's on and that's off and I generally well, I can see a difference there is definitely a difference as far as where I'm sitting I don't know if you guys can I hope it does work out for you but yeah for now that will have to be about the best that I can do um, and that is the first upgrade to our streaming desk and it only took about an hour um yeah i've been joel this is sorted it i'll see you next time just a couple of things before i wrap up the video um i suppose the first one is i wanted to show you exactly what we built today so this is our light that sits above our desk we've got it off at the moment so that it's not just you know lens flaring 
Um, but yeah, at the moment I've just got it connected up to the variable power supply. And eventually we're going to have it connected to a, um, a control box that will sit down here that I'll be able to turn off and on. Um, a couple of things with the video as well. I did notice that the webcam was auto-focusing off and on, off and on, off and on. Um, I've, I've watched the footage back now, so I'm going to fix that one up uh, for the next video. Um, I've also noticed that the sound was slightly off and a few cuts that I made were at really bad times because we had traffic going past. So I'll keep that one in mind as well. Alright guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.